Julianne Moore has the ability to portray complex female characters who face hardships but with a soft and vulnerable edge. A strong female character is not supposed to be perfect, she is flawed and realistic. Julianne Moore brings inner anguish to her characters that make us truly feel compassionate when circumstances give her suffering. And that is why she won the Best Actress Oscar in 2015 for her career-defining role in Still Alice. Julianne was born to an American father and Scottish immigrant mother. Julianne, her two younger siblings and her parents would live in various parts of the US due to her father's job of being a military judge. The constant moving around, changing schools and homes made Julianne an insecure and shy child who had difficulty making friends. Nonetheless, this on-the-go lifestyle gave Julianne a wide outlook on life as well as an ability to be a chameleon in terms of behavior. This reinvention of character helped her acting career, but acting was certainly not in Julianne's interest growing up. A good girl by nature and a straight-A student, becoming a doctor was the plan of action. But after appearing in school plays, one of her teachers encouraged her to pursue acting. The sensible Julianne turned to her parents, who too would approve of this aspiration to act, but insisted on her getting a BFA in theatre at Boston University first. In 1983, she graduated and moved to NYC, where she worked as a waitress and eventually got her start on off-Broadway and small TV roles. Before turning to film, Julianne actually thrived in TV. She won a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Ingenue in a Drama Series in 1988 for her role in a TV series called As the World Turns. In 1990, Moore made her film debut in Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. The film and TV experiences were integral to her moving forward in giving diverse performances on screen. She also starred in The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, the Gun in Betty Lou's Handbag and Body of Evidence. These were mostly supporting roles, but nonetheless, Julianne was appearing in multiple movies a year in the 90s that accumulated to her securing major roles eventually. In 1993, she starred in an ensemble cast film called Shortcuts, directed by Robert Altman, who actually cast Julianne himself after seeing her in a production of Chekhov's production of Uncle Banya. Julianne worked on the stage production for four years before her film debut, actually. This role in Shortcuts was Julianne's career breakthrough. This breakthrough followed more breakthrough roles that helped make Julianne a relevant and popular actress, like in Vanya on the 42nd Street, which was a film version of the Uncle Vanya play that Julianne did in the late 80s, and Safe in 1995. The rest of the 90s consisted of diverse roles like in Nine Months, the Lost World, Jurassic Park, and Boogie Nights. She received her first Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Boogie Nights, playing a troubled adult film actress trying to gain custody of her son during the late 70s and early 80s. In the year 2000, Julianne got her first Best Leading Actress Oscar nomination for her role in The End of the Affair, a romance drama opposite Ray Fiennes. 2003 was Julianne's highlight year because she became the ninth performer to receive two Academy nominations in one year. She got nominated for Best Supporting Actress for her role in The Hours opposite Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman and for Best Actress for her role in Far From Heaven. Julianne's filmography is so extensive and diverse and furthermore she has a record of five movie releases in one year. Her most recent record of five movie releases in one year was in 2014, which was also her most rewarding year. All five films, once again, were as diverse as ever, but one truly showed Moore's mastery of acting, Still Alice. This film starred Alec Baldwin, Kristen Stewart and Kate Bosworth and was directed by Richard Glatzer and Wash Westmoreland. This drama film was based on Lisa Genova's best-selling 2007 novel of the same name. Julianne played a 50-year-old Columbia University linguistics professor who suddenly begins to experience memory loss, which quickly leads her to being diagnosed with early-onset Alzheimer's disease. Of course, Alice's, Julianne's character's world, comes crushing down and her family's, the seemingly perfect, well-rounded, educated, financially steady family 
with lots of memories and love, is hit by this sudden shock. Alec Baldwin plays her husband, John, and Kristen Stewart, Kate Bosworth, and Hunter Parrish play their children. Alice's disease is sudden and quickly developing for the worse. Through the eyes of Alice, we watch her forget small things at first. Her mind is hazy, like she is underwater or lost in a thick fog. She can't remember where she is located during her run around Columbia's campus, then her syllabus for her lectures, and then her dinner plans. Her relationships with her family, especially her husband, become rocky. She is apologetic, and they sympathize with her, but this condition is unfixable. It only gets worse. Alice eventually leaves her job after telling the Dean, and this makes her even more lost and helpless. After all, her work, her career, was always her pride and joy. Alice begins to forget words, forget her children's names, and eventually that her children even are her children. The whole family is so busy with their own lives, and Alex's character is not willing to be by his wife's side as support and help due to his own work ambitions. With Alice's memory quickly abandoning her, Kristen Stewart's character comes back home from working in LA to take care of her mum. Alice says, I used to be someone who knew a lot. No one asks for my opinion or advice anymore. I miss that. I used to be curious and independent and confident. I miss being sure of things. There's no peace in being unsure of everything all the time. I miss doing everything easily. I miss being part of what's happening. I miss feeling wanted. I miss my life and my family. These words bring forward the essence of Alice and what is most important to her, to simply feel adequate and in control. Moore's incredibly touching and tear-jerking performance about a woman losing herself was lauded as her finest work yet. According to the LA Times, Moore is especially good at the wordless elements of this transformation, allowing us to see through the changing contours of her face what it is like when your mind empties out. The 2015 Oscars were not a disappointment either, because Moore also won the Best Actress Oscar. Moore has graced the screen many more times in commercial and indie favorites like Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 1, Kingsman, The Golden Circle, and The Glorious. Julianne Moore is not afraid of exposing the inner turmoil of a woman. That's what she does best. Even in silence, no dialogue, her characters expose a lot. And she said, I'm looking for the truth. The audience doesn't come to see you, they come to see themselves. And Julianne can adapt to many genres and characters, whether they are protagonists or antagonists, they always resonate. It was research. It was really, it really was very, I was very, very dependent on research. And one of the things I said to Wash and Rich, to our directors, was that I didn't want to depict anything on screen that I hadn't actually witnessed. You know, so, so the, the, the research was considerable and, and really um, lengthy, and people were so, so generous with their time and their information. And so, so all of those behaviors that I would, see, I'd see, I would kind of file away and think like, okay, okay, well, you know, and. There would be moments like the moment where, where I, I, I'm reading my um, speech to Lydia, to Kristen's character, right. and I start, yeah, I start to become angry, and then I shut it down. You know, that's, that's one of the side effects, actually, of Alzheimer's disease, the kind of irrational anger, behavioral, behavioral stuff, and her inability to look her in the eye at that point, too. You know, so, so there are things that are behavioral, and there are things that are emotional, and I was just always really, I tried to be really, really clear in, in plotting out, like, what happened when and, and why.